Now, the recent refurbishment of 14 Henrietta Street has been a painstaking project and for those involved, a chance to tell the story of the occupiers of the property throughout 300 years of history. I recently visited the house to take the tour. Have a look. Gemma, 14 Henrietta Street is now open to the public. Why is this building and this road in particular so important in terms of the social and the cultural and even political landscape of Ireland? This building is so important because it's covering 300 years of lives lived in Dublin City by across different classes of people. It's important historically and socially in particular. The social history of this building is so important because we have first-hand information from former residents. So there are people who lived in here, they're still alive and they've been helping you with this renovation project. Yes, and they're part of the, the, the new life of this building now and telling its story and, and lots more stories to tell. Gemma, wow, there is no other word for it. These rooms are stunning. High ceilings, original floorboards. You can imagine high society living here. Yes, exactly. Um, the building was built by Luke Gardner and it was intended to be a residential home for the upper echelon of society in Dublin at the time. So you had the Lord and Lady of the mm -hmm. Manor entertaining here. Did they live on this floor as well? Yes, so just on these two floors you would have had a grand staircase from, from the main reception downstairs. They would have really lived and entertained on two floors and then of course they would have had children that would have been seen and not heard um, living in the back, using the back stairs which became the tenement stairs um, upstairs and downstairs stairs as well. We used historians to, to get everything right in terms of like the colour of the walls, it matches Georgian times, but we also wanted to always remember the different layers of history that are going through this, so that's why you haven't got full furnishings in these rooms, you don't have rugs on the floor, we want to keep the um, floorboards exposed so you really get a sense of all the different um, footprints that would have crossed these floorboards throughout the centuries. So the high society and party living of 1740 only really continued till about 1801 and then there was a change of events. Tell us about that. Henrietta Street itself was the most fashionable street to live on for that upper echelon of society in the 18th century until 1801 when things changed. And when you've got the change of power going back to London from Dublin, a lot of these family move back, families move back to London um, and the north side of the city, and in particular this street, just um, fell out of favour, I suppose, for that class of people. In the 1800s, you've got the professional class moving in. You would have had solicitors living in here. You would have also had an archbishop. Bishop. By 1850 we had the encumbered estates and that led us to I suppose the, the most significant time in the 1870s which was Thomas Vance purchasing this building with the intention to turn it into tenement um, dwellings. Parties and high society are distant memories and the reality of an overcrowded city and very severe circumstances creeps in. Very distant memories because the reality of it is completely different then. We're now in the basement here of um, Fortin Henrietta Street and um, you can imagine this space in particular, you could have had maybe 10, 12, 13 members of a family living here. By 1911, which is when this, this is the time period we're based in, you would have been talking about 100 people living in this building alone. And on the street itself, which was all tenement dwellings, about 1,000 people living there. And we know that from the census of 1911. This wasn't deemed slum conditions. Um, you know, these were respectable families living here and renting spaces that were working. Um, you know, the, the father would have been working, he might have been in the army as well. Life was tough but it wasn't the toughest that was out there. Some of the figures tell us that it was very tough though. Obviously you can imagine for childbirth in particular, we know one lady on the street lost 12 of her 14 children. So um, the living conditions, in particular space like this, the damp and the cold, you can imagine, would have been very difficult to deal with. We know the floorboards would have been taken up and used as firewood. Even you can see here, the chairs and the tables are very low because the bottom would be chopped off to be used as firewood as well. By the 30s and 40s, you had less people living in the basement here. You've got the rise of the suburbs in Dublin, and that was encouraged to get people out of these overpopulated living conditions. So by the 1950s, um, we know the last family had left the basement here and they were just living on the upper floors. And you've also renovated one of those flats into how life would have been back in the 50s. We have, so I can bring you upstairs and show you that now. Now, so Laura, we've gone forward in time now to the 1960s and here we've we recreated um, a family home from the 1960s 
based on stories that, uh, that we've gathered from one particular family, the Dowling family. And we know the Dowling family lived here from the 1950s and 60s and Lily, who is still um, alive today, her family very generously donated their time and their stories and some of their photos as well. So these are involved in the recreation here. So Lily lived here um, with her mom, her dad and her two brothers and it's a three bedroom flat so you can see the partitions here. There was never really a huge amount of privacy since the partitions no. didn't go right the whole way up to the ceiling. They didn't and you can still see the Georgian high ceilings here and you can see the layers and layers of paint. We found remnants of the original lino that would have been here in the 1960s when the Dowling family lived here so we've recreated that based on the original. We've also recreated the um, wallpaper as well based on the original remnants that we found. Everything here is trying to be as close to how it was um, as possible. If you would like to go back in time yourself, you can log on to www.14henriettastreet.ie.